As spanking fetishists, I believe we have a moral responsibility to stand firmly in opposition to child abuse if the topic ever comes up in conversation. I believe that spankos specifically have this obligation because like, come on, if we aren't uniquely qualified to understand why spanking is a sexual act for consenting adults only, who is? And it's absolutely possible, in most cases, even preferable to have these debates without disclosing anything about our individual sexualities because oftentimes that only distracts from the point. And the point, of course, is that spanking children, state sanctioned child battery, is abuse. And children deserve the same legal right to protection from assault and battery as every other human demographic. But having these conversations is tricky. Whenever a cultural practice is as ingrained and unquestioned as state sanctioned child battery currently is in many countries, it's always going to be difficult to criticize that. Things change slowly, most of all minds. So whenever we criticize a culturally ingrained parenting practice, there is always going to be pushback. And that pushback comes in predictable packages. I've already made a few videos about some of them and will continue to make more, but this time I want to talk about perhaps the most common pushback, show me the studies. You'll know you're tiptoeing around the show me the studies trap when you hear something like this. Well, I haven't read enough research about that. Or this. This is a really complicated topic. I'm gonna need you to show me some studies. In this video, I'm going to share some thoughts about the show me the studies trap. And yes, I'm even going to show you some studies. But before we jump into the research, I think it's really important to underline how insincere this question is. It's the kind of question that sounds good, you know? Who would deny that real research is a valuable addition to any conversation? But just consider how odd it would feel if you were to express public opposition to, like, say, elder abuse, and someone were to reply, Have there been any studies on whether beatings are actually bad for old people? because I need to see some studies. No one has ever asked me to show the studies about whether beatings are bad for dogs or wives or disabled people or senior citizens or prisoners or any other demographic that has been historically subjected to so-called corporal punishment. But everyone needs to see the studies before they can decide whether beatings harm kids too. So we'll look at some of the studies in this video. If anyone ever tries to pull you into the show me the studies trap, you'll be armed with data. Or <laughs> like, you know, we've all got televisions in our pockets these days. You could just whip out this video and let me do the talking for you. Just remember, I do not believe that children deserve the same assault and battery protections as other humans because of these studies. I believe these studies only underline what was always true, that humans who have been alive for fewer years deserve the same protections as humans who have been alive for more years. And sexual battery doesn't stop being sexual battery just because your victim is your child. Study number one. The Harvard study. In 2021, researchers from the Departments of Education and Psychology at Harvard University published a study which used MRI scans to examine the brain function of children who had been spanked at some point during their lives against children who had not. Their research found that children who had been spanked had a higher activity response in the areas of the brain that regulate their emotional responses and detect threats, suggesting that spanking can alter a child's brain function in similar ways to severe forms of maltreatment. If you watch this channel regularly, you already know that I get pretty frustrated with how studies like these are often described in the media. The finest analytical minds of our generation were blown away recently by a new study from the University of Michigan, which found that physical abuse has a measurable and predictable effect on children, even if parents spell it S-P-A-N-K-I-N-G. It turns out that hitting another human is bad, even if they're smaller than you. Wow, Jillian! Wow, Max. What a shocking, mind-blowing discovery. So, yeah, that's snarky. I get frustrated with phrases like spanking can alter children's brain function in similar ways to severe forms of maltreatment because, <laughs> like, spanking is a severe form of maltreatment. So, obviously, it has a similar effect on the brain. 
But I am sincerely grateful that studies like these exist. And I do understand that reporters need to describe this research for audiences of people who are mostly still drinking the cultural Kool-Aid that spanking is somehow magically different than other flavors of abuse. But you know, and I know, that spanking children is just the same different spelling, and this brain scan research underlines why. The Harvard study is special because while a huge body of evidence has already linked generalized corporal punishment with negative outcomes, this study focused specifically on spanking and found those same negative outcomes. MRI scans showed that children who had been spanked exhibit a higher level of brain activity in multiple regions of the prefrontal cortexes, which in the long term predisposes children to mental health disorders like anxiety, depression, and violent or aggressive behavior. I should also note that a Harvard press release about this study included this line, quote, perhaps surprisingly, spanking elicits a similar response in children's brains to more threatening experiences like sexual abuse. You see the same reactions in the brain. So when an adult does it to another adult, non-consensual spanking is already sexual abuse. And when an adult does it to a child, spanking has similar effects on a child's brain as sexual abuse, which could mean I am so exhausted. <laughs> Study number two, the meta-analysis. In 2016, a meta-analysis of 75 studies involving 161,000 children found that spanking, defined for the purposes of this study as hitting a child on the buttocks or extremities using an open hand, found 13 harmful effects of the practice, including increased antisocial behavior, mental health problems, lower self-esteem, and impaired cognitive ability. This study concludes, quote, across study designs, countries, and age groups, spanking has been linked with detrimental outcomes for children, a fact supported by several key methodologically strong studies that isolate the ability of spanking to predict child outcomes over time. Although the magnitude of the observed associations may be small, when extrapolated to a population in which 80% of children are being spanked, such small effects can translate into large societal impacts. Parents who use spanking, practitioners who recommend it, and policymakers who allow it might reconsider doing so given that there is no evidence that spanking does any good for children and all evidence points to the risk of it doing harm. Study number three, the 69 countries study. So, Spanking can warp a child's developing brain, making that child predisposed to mental health disorders. Whatever. Who cares? Will it make kids more docile and compliant? Will it make the experience of being a parent more pleasant for me? I want to see studies about that. Well, Okay, a 2021 study that was published in The Lancet reviewed research from 69 countries and found, quote, clear and compelling evidence that physical punishment does not improve children's behavior and instead makes it worse. These results were consistent across demographics. In other words, kids were more likely to act out after being physically punished regardless of the child's race, sex, or ethnicity. The review also found that these results remained consistent despite overall parenting styles. In other words, even in familial environments that were generally warm and positive, that did not buffer the effect of physical punishment on an increase in behavior problems. In other words, studies show that spanking is not only bad for kids, it's bad for parents and families too. Study number four, is there another side? So I've shown you a study that proves spanking is bad for children and their brains, and I've shown you a study that proves spanking is bad for parents and their children's behavior. And I could show you a lot more studies that found similar things. But research is always complex, right? Findings are always varied. I'm not here to cherry pick studies that support my cause. I'm here to actually have these conversations. And some of you might be wondering, are there other studies out there? Studies that found different results? Honestly, I kind of wish there were. This would be a stronger video and and a more compelling argument if I could find some reliable studies that suggest spanking kids might have some positive outcomes, then I could earn credibility by acknowledging those studies and explain why I still hold the opinion that I do. But the truth is, there's really not much out there. In 2001, the New York Times referred to psychologist Diana Baumrind, who studied authoritarian and permissive parenting styles. Quote, Dr. Baumrind described findings from her own research. An analysis of data from a long-term study of more than 100 families, 
indicating that mild to moderate spanking had no detrimental effects when such confounding influences were separated out. When the parents who delivered severe punishment, for example, frequently spanking with a paddle or striking a child in the face, were removed from the analysis, Dr. Baumrind and her colleague found that few harmful effects linked with spanking were left. So that's pretty weak. Few harmful effects is not the same thing as clear and measurable positive effects. There's also some research that came out of Calvin College, a private Christian university in Michigan, which claimed that children who are spanked before the age of six, quote, grow up to be happier and more successful than those who have never been hit. I can't find too much actual detail about this study as it was not published in any kind of scientific or peer reviewed journal, but according to a presentation at the Society for Research in Child Development, apparently this study consisted of interviews with 2,600 people who both had and had not been spanked as children. So that's pretty weak too. As we've discussed before, self-reported takes about whether or not abuse survivors turn out fine are not hard science and feel pretty unconvincing along brain scan studies. To quote Dr. Sandra Graham Burnham, a psychology professor and principal investigator for the Child Violence and Trauma Laboratory at the University of Michigan, quote, it's a very controversial area even though the research is extremely telling and very clear and consistent about the negative effects on children. So I showed you some studies and the studies are clear and consistent. But here's the thing, just the question of whether or not studies show that spanking is harmful for kids is already flawed since it misassigns the burden of proof. If some people want to argue that one demographic, kids, should not be protected by the assault and battery laws that protect everybody else, the burden of proof should fall on them to convince us that this legal inequality is justified. I agree strongly with researchers from Pepperdine University who wrote this in their conclusion to one study on corporal punishment in the United States. Quote, Although the burden of proof in debates about physical punishment has typically fallen upon those who argue children should never be physically punished, perhaps it is time for a shift in perspective. Advocates opposed to physical punishment of children have been asked, essentially, to provide empirical evidence that spanking does more harm than good. Perhaps it is time to place the burden of proof on the defenders of physical punishment and ask the defenders of physical punishment to provide empirical support that spanking does more good than harm. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. But the truth is, just writing this script has left me feeling really empty. It's an exercise in futility. The show me the studies line is insincere. People who hit kids don't do it because they care about any studies. They do it because they like it. They like the power or they like the feeling that they can influence their children's behavior or they like doing whatever their pastor told them to do or they like having an outlet for their frustration or they like it for other insidious reasons. And people who don't personally hit children but want to remain agnostic on the politics of other people's parenting choices also don't care about studies. They too remain agnostic because they like it. They like the neutrality. They like being likable. They like being able to claim the moral high ground of non-judgment. This video isn't going to change any minds. So the truth is, I, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know why I bother. I guess the only thing I've got for you is this. If you're at peace, please stay at peace. But if you were hit as a child and you're angry about that, I'm here to tell you that you can be angry if you want to be. These studies prove why. The person who hit you was supposed to give you care and protection and instead did damage to your brain. The person who hit you was supposed to give you lessons about how to function and thrive in the world and instead damaged your capacity to thrive. You can be mad if you want to be. You deserve an apology that you might never get. So if nothing else, I hope these studies at least convince you that you didn't deserve it because no one deserves that. And if you're angry, please just remember that anger is a tool. Don't turn it on yourself. Use it to build something better. Thank <laughs> you.